Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's URC Round 2 betting preview, which is proudly brought to you by Betcoza. If you haven't already, then do it right now. Use the link in the description and go and sign up for Betcoza. And you can get a 100% first deposit bonus up to 1,000 Rand using the link down in the description. There are so many different things um, happening this weekend. So much rugby with the USC firmly back with the rugby championship happening tomorrow. And a lot of uh, different things. We're going to be doing um, sort of giveaways this weekend. We're going to be giving away some free bets to people. So in order to be able to receive a free bet, you need to have signed up. So make sure you go and sign up. Get your, your deposit bonus. So um, they'll basically match whatever your deposit is up to 100%. Um, up to 1,000 Rand if you use the link in the description below. Basically, what's going to happen, we're going to go through every game. We're going to look at some of the bets available. We're going to look at some of the odds, and we're going to sort of see where we might be able to find a bit of value for this weekend. And before we do that, please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Now, last weekend, we saw a lot of very different results. And, you know, last weekend, we were sort of a little bit blind going into the season. We weren't quite sure how new signings were going to settle in. We weren't quite sure how teams were going to start, for example. This weekend, we've got a little bit more data in terms of the performances from last weekend. And I think that last weekend, we saw quite a lot of different teams really stand up and take a, take a step up. And, and some teams performed far better than I think we, 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 we sort of intended on giving them credit to, so, and credit to them for being able to do that. This weekend, I, I think we'll sort of see a bit more sort of normality, although I think we can also lean on last weekend to sort of see which teams have started well, which teams I think could be quite um, competitive. Um, so in terms of the teams, first up, we have got um, Zebra taking on Sharks. And I think that last weekend, for example, we saw Zebra push Leinster right up to the end. Now, yes, it was a very different Leinster side to the one, for example, that's playing this weekend, which now has a host of Irish internationals back. However, it was a Zebra side that looked very good. It looked disciplined. It looked like the new signs were going to make big, big dif a big difference. Um, and I don't think that this is going to be as... Um, will there's going to be as many sort of worlds apart as as maybe some people are suggesting? You know, I do think that this could be quite uh, a bit closer. Um, so if you look at the odds, for example, um, very much the Sharks um, in favour. They've got um, 1.09 to win. Zebra at 6.75 to win. I don't think there's much value in there. However, I do very much expect um, Zebra to be able to 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 cover the spread with that positive 16.5. You know, they came within a try of, of beating Leinster last weekend. And I think that this is a shark side. First game going into the competition, away from home, by the way, playing in Italy. A, ho a host of injuries. I mean, you've got Vincent Tucker out there. You've got um, very few fly, um, fly halves uh, at, at the moment. There. And if you look at the side, it's a side that's strong, but, but could get much, much stronger. Um, and I think that given the fact that there are so many injuries, um, I personally think that 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 Zebra could um, get quite close to 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 going, not necessarily all the way, but I definitely think they're going to be within 16.5. So I think that that's um, a very good value uh, for money bet at 1.9. I, I do think the Sharks could be slow up the blocks, um, missing a lot of, obviously, a lot of their Springbok stars and a lot of injuries. It's not the strongest Sharks side that we're going to see throughout the rest of the season. And I think it's Zebra side, full of confidence, and they'll be looking to try and kick on from last weekend. Moving on to Glasgow taking on Cardiff, a very disappointing performance from Glasgow last weekend, it, it must be said. Um, and I think that that Cardiff, for example, I, th I think that, I think they could very much be in this game. You know, I thought that Glasgow Warriors last year, last week were completely taken apart from Benetton. It wasn't the Glasgow Warriors we saw last season. And and I think that the fact that Cardiff beat Munster and they be kind of written off here, I, I think that there's, first of all, I think there's a lot of value in, in potentially punting for a Cardiff win. Um, but I also think that that Cardiff um, plus 4.5 is is a bit of a no-brainer because I, I do think they could potentially actually win this game. If not, really put Glasgow Warriors, push them all the way. Um, so, yeah, I, I, said, I, I personally think that, that you know, we it, it could be a very close game. I, I do think that Cardiff are going to be a lot more competitive than maybe the, the books are suggesting. You know, as I said, they did beat Munster last weekend. Glasgow Warriors, on the other hand, looked a little bit in disarray. So, yeah, I, I do think that, that Cardiff could be very competitive this weekend. Um, and I'm hoping that they will be competitive because I think that we need to see more from the Welsh teams this season um, at the end of the day. They're, you know, I, I think that last season they were pretty disappointing, but we've seen signs... Of of some um you know players really sort of stepping up. They've obviously made a couple of very good signs across the various players. You know something like Liam Williams are being ruled off quite a few months. A big blow. Um, but yeah, I actually think that Cardiff could could go away and actually beat 
um, the Glasgow Warriors. Moving on to Leicester versus Benetton, it's, fine. It's, 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 it's hard to find value in this game because, first of all, Leinster last weekend, for example, did get pushed right to the end by Zebra. However, it was a very different Leinster side. They were all their stars back. Your Gary Ringo's captaining. Um, you know, your your front, your, your pack is, the pack is childish. You know, Ken and Doris all back. Josh Van Der back. Um, David Kearney, uh, Dan Sheehan all the way back. Uh, Robbie Henshaw back in the side. It's an incredibly strong Leinster side. And I think Benetton last weekend were very good but I don't expect them to be as special this weekend. Um, I don't think they're going to win, for example, but it's a very, very big spread. You know, at, at minus 34.5 for Leinster, I, I'm not sure where this team will gel enough to be able to sort of put together that kind of scoreline on a Benton side, which were decent last weekend. Um, so this one, for me, is a bit of a tricky one. You know, I think that, um, you know, potentially looking at maybe a first half um, handicap of 16.5 could be an interesting one. Um, because we saw sort of Leinster go up quite very quickly last weekend um, against Zebra, and then Zebra sort of crawled their way back. So, so that could be an interesting one. Um, personally, I'm, I'm trying to see a bit, of, a, lot, a lot of value in this game because I think it's very difficult to know exactly what will happen. Obviously, if Leinster pitch up and that and that team gels, it could get ugly. They are also at home, you know, so they obviously that adds to their potential to be able to to cover the spread. But um, yeah, I'm not not sort of convinced it's going to be as one sided again. As, as things might, might suggest, because we still don't know exactly what sort of form a lot of these players are in. Looking at Scarlets versus Ulster, um, again here, you know, I think that I think that Ulster at 1.54, or even Ulster at minus seven, uh, 3.5, is a, is a very good bet, because I, I, I think that this Ulster side looked like a million bucks last weekend. I personally think that they really sort of laid down the gauntlet. I thought they were the team that, for me, impressed me the most. They looked like a house on fire. And while Scarlet's, you know, came over with a draw against Ospreys, and which is which is not the worst result, not the best result. Um, I think Ulster, despite being a, a away from home, are going to do it. You know, so I think that um, yeah, Ulster at at, at minus at minus three point five or one point eight three is a very good bet. I I, I think even a one point five for for just a win um, is, is quite a safe bet. I, I don't. I'd be very surprised personally if Scarlet were to go and win this weekend. Um, because I do think that Ulster last weekend looked like a million, like 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 really good, um, and I'm hoping that we're going to see a, a, a very competitive Ulster side. I'd like for them to sort of start putting themselves in in, in the monks monster and Leinster a bit more, and and because we've seen last weekend, last season we saw we saw patches where they were and they were, um, but they just didn't really have the consistency the entire time. Uh, Storms versus Connacht again, a difficult one to call because again we don't we haven't seen sort of seen the the form that Storms are showing. We've also not we haven't seen the team yet. For example, quite a few injuries. No Damien Blimser. No, um, Sasha and Gomez I think, still, still injured, not uh, expected to play this weekend. Um, but they are at home. They're at the Donny Craven Stadium, for example, so not quite at home, but that they are at home. Uh, Connacht coming off a uh, a loss last weekend. I do think Storm is probably going to win it. I mean, it's, it's weird that we're talking about the, the current champions, you know, maybe not winning, but they're missing quite a few players. Um, but I do think the Connacht will be much better. Um, so I personally think that Connacht at, at plus 11.5 for me is grabbing my attention um, a little bit there. I'm not, I mean, yeah, it's a Stormers first game, so things do take a while to sort of start jutting together. It is a bit of a new look. Uh, it will probably be a new look back line, you know, no work land. Obviously, no Damian Willemser. Um, a couple of players missing there for, for the Stormers. Uh, no Hershey Yankees, for example. Uh, front row is very different. No Kitsop, no Franz Mahova. So... Um, yeah, we don't know exactly what the storm starts going to be. So I do think the Connacht will, will will be a bit more competitive than than what they would have been had the Stormers had everybody they they could call on. Um, Bulls versus Edinburgh. I think this is going to be interesting then because I think Bulls last weekend played some very good rugby, but I think the sh the Lions were very much guilty of not taking their chances. And I think had the Lions taken their chances a bit more, they should have made it a much more competitive game. The Lions played well enough to get more points, but the discipline cost them. Um, Bulls were very leaky in their defence. Missed a lot of tackles. Defensive system didn't quite look look all there. And I do think that Edinburgh, who probably have a lot more quality than the Lions at the moment, um, will be able to exploit the Bulls' defence a little bit more. Um, you know, I do think the Bulls probably are on to win the game. Um, how much it depends on how well they play or how much how well they start. I think for me, um, but. I don't, I'm not sure that Bulls at, at, at negative 10.5 is, is, is a great bet. I do think Edinburgh could be a bit closer. Um, so that's, for example, where I could be looking, um, I'm looking at. Um, it is a home game, though. You know, altitude comes into it as well. 
But you know, Edinburgh outside they made the playoffs last week, last season. So it's it's it, they're they're a decent side, and I I do think that they will be able to 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 hold their own. And I don't think Bulls looked last weekend like the finished product. I think they will be by the end of the season. I do think the Bulls are going to be very competitive this season. Um, once they get everybody back, you know, no Kane and Moody, no no Cody Aronson. Um, still missing like the likes of Ian Hurston, for example. A um, couple of names. Uh, Albert Lowe, who is another same back. We interested to see if he does play this weekend. I reckon he probably will. Um, but yeah, so I think that I think that Edinburgh could make it quite competitive. Ospreys versus Lions. Lions last weekend again played pretty well, but couldn't really do much. Um, and I think that Ospreys getting that draw against Carlos. I've actually I think that Ospreys could be in for a very good season. Uh, Gav Anscombe is looking very much back back to his base. Probably playing some of his best rugby I've seen him play ever. Um, and I don't think an upset is really on the cards. And it, it pains me to say it as a Lions Lions supporter. And unfortunately, with the Lions, we just don't seem to. We either kind of win or we lose for, with quite a few points. We very rarely get close to. You know, we very rarely lose by three points or four points. I don't know why. Um, we often will lose by one or two tries. And in that perspective, you know, Osprey's a minus 9.5. Probably looks pretty attractive. Um, it's a very rotated line size as well. I'm not convinced by it, fully convinced by the changes. You know, a couple of good changes. They managed to starting, but it's a new hotback combination. So then the Humber, Jan Lombard, they've never played together. Um, both players coming back into the sort of setup. No Hank of Vague, for example. Andrew Pasir outside centre. Uh, uh, Maurice Lowe played pretty poorly last week. Um, the scrums were good last weekend. Um, lineups will probably need a bit of work, so I don't, I don't know. I think that I said I think the Ospreys are a far more settled side, and I do expect them to be more competitive. Um, so, but I think yeah, the minus nine point five is probably where the best value is. Uh, then finally, we've got Dragons versus Munster, and I think that you've got to look at Munster minus eleven point five. I think Munster last weekend's game was a bit of an anomaly. I don't expect them to be that poor, um, and I think the Dragons. I mean, they, they didn't score a trial last weekend. They lost to Edinburgh by, I think, like 58 points. So I think that Munster are, are going to walk all over them. Yes, it is at Dragons. So that does change things a little bit. Um, but I think, especially on the fact that Munster coming off a loss, they'll want to bounce back. They'll want to prove their quality. Um, I think that this should be a pretty straightforward. I, I, I personally think that this is arguably the Munster at, at, at minus 11.5. This could be one of the easiest bets of the, of the weekend. For me, one of the safest bets, rather. Because uh, I do foresee them going pretty well against Dragons, finding the trial line um, and, and really dominating uh, the Welsh side. But uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know which teams you're watching, which, which are your favourites and what you're really looking out for. And um, please do smash like on the video as it's subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure you go and sign up for Bed Co. There's a link in the description. As I said, you can get 100% uh, the first deposit bonus up to the value of 1,000 Rand if you use the link in the description. We will be doing free bets this weekend as well, looking at probably prediction games, stuff like that. Um, so... In order to get access to that, you have to make sure you sign up. So go and sort that yourself out now. And I'll see you this weekend for lots of URC action. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Stephen. I'll chat to you soon.